Hello, uh, I would uh, like to greet you coming in. I, I, for those of you who don't know, I'm Pastor Moore, and we're uh, speaking to you from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Apopka, Florida. I want to um, tell you that this is uh, an unusual thing for us here. Uh, the, the celebration of the day is the ascension of Jesus up into heaven, the 40th day after Easter, and uh, that happens on this Thursday. I would uh, remind you that there are, are three things really connected to that ascension. Its importance is overlooked an awful lot. The first thing being, uh, well, there are two things that Jesus said. One of them is that he went to the Father's side to prepare a place for you. Secondly, he said he was uh, with the Father uh, sending the Holy Spirit to you. And the third thing comes up later uh, when Paul is discussing it. He talks about Jesus interceding for you with the Father uh, in your prayers and in uh, other needs. And all of that comes together because Jesus ascended into heaven. So uh, well, I, would, I suppose you should uh, listen for those things today. So <clears throat> let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us uh, confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, continue now with the readings for the day. The first of them is uh, from the book of Acts in chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them, he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians is the first chapter, verses 15 to 23. 
for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now uh, let us uh, speak the words of the gradual together. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. And now finally, the gospel of the Lord. Uh, we are in the gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 44 to 53. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now uh, let us sing a hymn. sermon message this morning for this 
day of ascension is uh, to come from the gospel reading in Luke 24. It's just the closing verses of that gospel. Um, I would like to remind you of, uh, it looks like, uh, what, three verses, 47, 48, and 49. Uh, Jesus talking. He says, Repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I cannot tell you how uh, difficult this looks, to have, uh, uh, this message that Jesus has given to these men. Uh, what it reminds me of is the... Uh, well, I'm sure you've seen it on TV enough times, and if you have been parents to teenagers at all, then you uh, at least have thought about uh, what people call the talk, uh, the birds and the bees kind of things. We used to call it a long time ago. When you have the talk with your kids, it's, um, well, I, I would have to say for most of us, we feel uh, essentially inadequate to the task maybe just a little terrified because the, the subject is difficult and you have to talk about things that are terribly awkward. But, you know, the other side of that is uh, if you have some responsibilities here. And uh, what if you didn't have that talk with them? Then uh, it's like anything else where important information needs to be imparted. The whoever you're talking to is going to think they already know everything. You can imagine a teenager walking around thinking no, they know everything about sex. Um, that's that's a even scarier thought than having to talk. Uh, but oh, honestly, did you know everything when you were a teenager? I think probably not. Even though at the time you probably thought you did. See, uh, the reason I bring this up is because. I want you to try and imagine uh, being one of these apostles on, on this Mount of Ascension. Um, Jesus just told them that they're going to have something like the talk, like that, uh, you know, at that level of stress and difficulty about him for the rest of their lives. That's going to be their job as they walk around in this world, and then, and then he left. I, uh, <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even imagine that at all. Like, you know, when you, when you look at the, the, the reading in Acts for today, uh, Luke tells this story uh, in a different sort of way. He's speaking in both of these things, or at least uh, relating the narrative in both these things. So these guys are up on that Mount of Ascension and Jesus disappears up into the clouds and they're just standing there full on dumbfounded looking at the sky where he disappeared, which had to be, well, it had to be upsetting because he'd been with them and he died and he rose and he's their, their hero, their savior, their, well, their everything. And he, and he left uh, with this uh, little note that they're the witnesses. Angels had to tell them to get on with it because they were so stunned. Uh, inadequate doesn't even, doesn't even begin to be a strong enough word for what they must have been experiencing in that moment. Their thoughts, their emotions, their difficulties, I can't even begin. But see, here we are now listening to this, and how's that working for you? Uh, trying to put yourself there uh, is probably not terribly difficult in your imagination. The, the, the problem that is the real problem is that Jesus isn't here anymore. He's up in heaven. Now he's not uh, left you without any kind of help. But see, these guys that he sent out being witnesses, they're not here either. They're all gone. They're all with him. Uh, of course, as they went about their business, you can read the book of Acts if you need to hear about it, all the letters that Paul wrote. You can see that they taught other people. 
and those other people taught other people and you have 2,000 years or nearly so down through the generations of Christians to you. Uh, and you, as it turns out, are today's witnesses for Jesus. So when you look honestly at the task of being witnesses, uh, I don't know how this is for you, but for me, uh, the word inadequate comes up over and over and over again in my mind. I can't even begin to say that I can do what the apostles could do. It's, it's just too unimaginable. Um, I suppose, I, you know, when I've heard people talk to me uh, over the years about being a witness and how important it is that I should go do that, I get a little upset. I, I get a little stiff and uh, fussy. And uh, I say, why are you bringing that up to me over and over and over again? In here, I am bringing it up again. Of course, it's not my fault. <laughs> Jesus brought it up first, and so we're stuck. But the, the promise, he says, is, is upon you to carry. The promise. Right after, inadequate comes terrified <laughs> to say the wrong thing to someone uh, that is, uh, think about how important it is that we have discussions about Jesus and all the things that he's done. And, and you know, saying the wrong thing in those moments could be uh, in our own minds so important it's a disaster if we get it wrong. And then, of course, there's the other problem of, uh, of people uh, getting fussy about it, because if you, you know, you can get hollered at just for saying anything about Jesus anywhere. Uh, and everybody's not terribly friendly when they want to know stuff. So I, am I getting close to your emotional state when you realize yet again that you are his witnesses in this world? For me, it can be worse than the talk. As important as that is, and I mean with your teenagers, uh, uh, this one has to come up with your teenagers too because they s suffer the, the notion that they're geniuses in regards to theology too. Uh, and, and this is just life. And, and all of that with Jesus looking on from heaven and the 12 being up there with him too, and it feels just a little bit stifling with pressure. Can you do it? Can you do it? Well, I suppose that you can on occasion, because I know that you have on occasion. But do you even want to do it when you're not sure it's going to be a happy occasion? It's, you know, all this should be reminding you that for some odd reason, Jesus sent sinners into the world with this promise upon them and then expected it to go well. And, and we have all these concerns lying in front of us, making us hesitate. I, I would confirm one thing for you. You're not wrong about the difficulty. It is, is scary and difficult. You are indeed, as it turns out, not wrong about being inadequate to any task that Jesus might have given you. If you think about that even a little bit, you know you fall to temptation and sin. You're weak about your courage and you fade back when things are too difficult. Not all the time, but an awful lot of the time. And, and you're not in your own mind, I think probably you're better at this than you think most of the time, but you're not really clever enough or wise enough to find a winsome voice to gather up the souls that Jesus intends to gather. But Jesus knows how to do all of that. It's just a strange thing that he would set us in place to do it for him. He left. He can do it perfectly and without fail, but he left. And he left us here with this task. But he sent you. He sent you when he ascended. Now, it took a little time for him to get around to you uh, being born and uh, becoming a believer and being baptized and all the things that have happened to you. But that's, that's what happened. He ascended. And you are his witnesses. He does actually know how to make that work, though. Even with people like you and me, he knows how to make it work. He didn't... Re just leave you without any tools. He revealed the whole counsel of God in Scripture, and one of his commands when he ascends into heaven is to, to teach everything that he's commanded. Well, you probably don't know everything, but he opened your mind to put it together for you. This is the, 
the stuff in verse 45, it says he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. That, that understand word in Greek is really peculiar. It, it, it means uh, that he, he helped them to put it together. To, to put all the pieces together. He took all of the counsel of God, all of that scripture stuff, and he put it together for them in their minds. And he does this for you too. He has said as much, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit in you uh, is connected intimately with your own mind and with the Father's mind, and he knows what to say, and he helps you say it. He assembles it in your mind so that when you need it, it's there, which should help a little probably more than a little. He's forgiven every shortcoming. Anything that you uh, mess up with in this particular regard, he knows about it beforehand, and he works all things for good. He takes away all of your sin, and he makes it gone forever. That's what happened at his cross. That's why this is in the story. He defe defeated death for you too. So you cannot be defeated by being terrified for your life because that is never going to happen. There's no reason for you to fear anything because Christ knows how to undo it all and to work it all for good. And he laid the promise of his father in your hands. He didn't do that in ignorance or foolishness because he didn't know how terrible we are. He, he knows exactly who you are and what you are and where you are and how long you're going to be there. He even blessed you countless times Right here in your own house of God, he did that. Uh, how many times have you heard the benediction? Are you going to hear it again today? The Lord bless you and keep you well. That's his blessing. And he didn't send just anyone for so vital a task. He sent you. He, he entrusted it to you, his holy ones, his saints, his chosen witnesses. He made you that. He fully supplied you. And he filled you with his own Holy Spirit. And he sent you on his way for every task and circumstance that he lays out before you, fully understanding your talents, your abilities, your level of intellect or, or lack of intellect or power or whatever it is that you need, you have. You have in every circumstance of life. All this has happened as he sent his own Holy Spirit and his own life to be within you to be with his father and your father with you according to his promise of ascension. And when Jesus makes a promise, it is so. When Jesus makes a statement, it is so. Not just because he tells the truth, but because he can make it so. And so you are his witnesses. And it does work. I know it doesn't feel like it works all the time. It certainly doesn't work in any particular moment the way you expect it to. But God says when he sends out his word with his witnesses, it always works. It works according to what he wants, what he proposes for it to do. It always works. And it has worked. The, the body of Christ is not a small thing anymore. It grows and it grows every day. I, I was uh, talking to someone just yesterday uh, that there are more Lutherans in Tanzania, in that little country in, in uh, Africa, than there are in the entire United States. Well, that doesn't just happen. That's the body of Christ going forth as witnesses. And you see that, and you are aware of that. You are not alone in this world like you have no idea what a witness does or accomplishes. You know. And you are his. You are his with the whole body of Christ. The whole body of Christ, not just in the now, but all of the whole body of Christ that has gone before you and all the whole body of Christ that yet lies in the future, all the body of Christ that is in heaven. All of that is the growth that Christ has set in place through his witnesses. I don't know if you uh, ever noticed this or, or, uh, or if it upset you like it does some people, but uh, did you ever notice there are places in scripture when Jesus is speaking and doing things that he tells people after it's over, he says, don't tell anybody. Sometimes I think, well, you should tell me that because I, <laughs> it would make life a little easier, but he doesn't tell me that. 
Uh, but why doesn't he want people to talk about stuff in those moments? Well, it it's, uh, applies to this in a way that maybe you haven't thought about. But it's, it's simple enough. When he says, don't tell anybody, it's because he's not done teaching, first of all. He hasn't yet opened uh, the minds of the people that would do the witnessing to understand all the things and how they come together in Scripture. He has not yet gone to the cross. He has not yet shown them the empty tomb or shown himself alive in the flesh and spirit of his divinity. He has not yet sent his Holy Spirit. All that stuff is yet lacking when he has said, don't tell anybody. Basic problem is all of those people that he says that to are lousy witnesses. They don't know what they need to know to speak about it properly. So he tells them, don't talk about it. But this is not like you, because you do indeed have the full teaching of Christ in your scripture available to you. You have already had your mind opened by the Holy Spirit that lives in you, and the, the life of Christ as you being the two of, of one flesh and the body of Christ. It, you already have seen the cross and it's accomplished it. Uh, it, it's accomplishment of the forgiveness of sins for all people all time. You have already known uh, by witnesses that have gone before you that the tomb was empty and that Christ was alive and is indeed alive to this day. You are not lousy witnesses. You are good witnesses. You are the chosen witnesses of Christ. And as we walk around this world, we can do this confidently because... He is with us to the end of the age because his spirit is within us, because he has taught us and opened our minds and all the things that we need, all of the circumstances that we meet, he has prepared us for in his own body. And that is the way it ought to be. Take no fear, take no lack of confidence, be of good courage and be his witnesses. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes on understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I ask that you would uh, pray with me. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, please uh, pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, who hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Look forward to seeing you. I think just in another week or two, we'll be ready to go. Uh, in the meantime, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.